Last year, Samsung surprised us with a phone that we thought would never see the light of day following a good reception from users to its predecessor back in 2020. And that phone is the Galaxy S21 FE. However, the majority of reviewers in 2022 gave this device a verdict that I'll summarize in a right phone in a very wrong time because the newer flagship of that year, the S22 series, is coming in a couple of weeks prior to this release and the price tag is a hard pill to swallow. Now that the Galaxy S23 series just launched a couple of weeks ago and the rumors are swirling again that there's no more succeeding fan edition models like this one, could this be the final error of the FE line and is it worth getting this year? Well, let's see about that. Hey guys, James here, your tech buddy, and this is Tech MNO. Join me as I review this Samsung Galaxy S21 FE this 2023. Let's start the video now with the shortest unboxing of the phone. Cutting off the stickers on the box, lift it up, and we see the phone first. Setting that aside, we can see a thin box containing the paperwork, SIM injector tool, and the USB-C to C cable for data and charging. And if you're still wondering why there's no charger in the box, wake up! It's already 2023 and not 2010. Everything you had before is gone, especially with her feelings. Uh, in this video, I will share with you the things that I like and don't like and give you my thoughts if it's worth getting this phone. Let's kick things off with its display. As you may know, Galaxy phones display on their flagship and upper mid-range phones are their bread and butter. And the Galaxy S21 FE is no exception here. The 6.4 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display with a 2400 by 1080 resolution with a 411 pixels per inch and a 120Hz refresh rate is the display spec combination everyone wants for. Pair that up with an in-display fingerprint scanner, up to 700 nits of peak brightness, and all of that is covered with a Corning Gorilla Glass Invictus protection. And you have the best display experience with the vivid colors, deep blacks, slim bezels, and a smooth scrolling on social media. And you can use this on a very sunny day outdoors, and the size is perfect. For my hands. Well, I just wish that the refresh rate is adaptive, like it can go to 1 hertz if you don't interact with the screen to save energy, but it's a minor complaint here and it's actually a bit cheaper than the other siblings in this series, so that's cool for me. Let's talk about the second thing I like on this phone and its software. The Galaxy S21 FE when launched, and I went and got this one, at the time of this recording, it's running on One UI 5 on top of Android 13. Honestly, I had some experience with Samsung's old UI before, and I didn't have a hard time learning to use it. The UI is clean, with a very minimal bloatware, because some of them are uninstallable, so it's way different from stock Android and is still stuck from the left and right page pane layout from the yesteryears of Android. From the big icons to customizable color palette thanks to the feature Google announced back in Android 12, cohesive settings menu, icon shapes on the home and menu screens, and my favorite one is the one-handed mode that shrinks the whole screen into a small customizable 4-inch canvas for much easier one-handed operation with the phone. Well, one UI may lack some additional features like the clone app and just for all apps not just on Facebook Messenger and better game mode features than Xiaomi and other Chinese UIs had, this is a preference-based nitpick for me. But nonetheless, I can still get a very stable software experience on One UI than the other UIs on the market like MiUI that, as you may know, is a notorious on software issues. Still talking about the software, the next thing I like about the S21 FE is the software support. Samsung is the leader of the pack now once held by Google Pixels before that provides their flagship phones and even their upper mid-range phones like the S21 FE right here with four Android upgrades and five years monthly security patches which means that this phone can update until Android 16 and it's safe from exploits and vulnerabilities up until 2027. For me, this is an essential feature people should have on their smartphones now. And Samsung is providing it here, not just on their s series lineup, but also on their mid-range segment like the A33, A53, and more. And hopefully this trend will be on all phones in the near future. All right, let's talk about the design of the S21 FE. 
At first glance, you may not like the back of this design because it's polycarbonate plastic and kind of looks like an A-series phone. But for me, I still love it with its matte finish here, the contour cut camera array that carries on from its older other sibling, and the aluminum frame looks premium and solid. The olive color here looks sophisticated yet minimalist, and the IP68 water and dust resistance rated, you never worry about anything bad on it. When it comes to the other hardware specs on the phone, like its speakers, I really adore the Galaxy S21 has a stereo speaker setup, which sounds so good and well balanced. However, it's quite lacking on the bass, in my honest opinion here. My name is James, and this is Tech Amado. In this video, we will explore the Asus Vivo Pro 14 OLED K3400. In terms of the Wi-Fi reception, the Galaxy S21 FE has a Wi-Fi 6E support for fast and stable internet connection. Though I didn't try it because our modem doesn't have that, the 5G connection though is rock solid in my usage since our area is 5G. You can see it here. Bluetooth connection is spot on, GPS is accurate, NFC is available here as well for fast pairing and cashless transactions. And the other display fingerprint scanner is fast and reliable. Though I should take note that in my experience, if I didn't touch the display for a long period of time, the scanner is not active. You need to wake up the device in order to read your fingerprint. Before we go any further, if you enjoy watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get you notified when a brand new video will come out. And follow us on our social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok at Tech MNO for more content and big giveaways we have right now that you can check out in the card right here. Alright, moving on to the cameras now. The Galaxy S21 FE has a triple camera setup, which all of them are usable and not a filler camera. Thank goodness. It has a 12 megapixel main camera with a dual pixel autofocus and OIS support. Another 12 megapixel camera for ultra wide and an 8 megapixel 3x zoom lens with OIS and autofocus too. And on the front of the phone houses a 32 megapixel selfie camera. Looking at the daylight results here of the rear camera, and I gotta say that I am impressed by it. Details are very good, it doesn't have noise on the shot, and the contrast is good too. On the color saturation though, it depends on your preference if you want a natural looking photo or a vibrant color photo. For me, I like a bit of vibrancy on some cool subjects like this photo of a cold thirst quencher here. By the way, the scene optimizer is turned off in all of the tests here to avoid oversaturation. What I notice here is that all three lenses have the same color rendition and profile in some subjects which is a good thing compared to the cameras of the other phones that have mixed results. However, the zoom lens on the F21 FE was downgraded to 8 megapixels so you only had 3 times zoom. But it doesn't matter to me because I can capture moonshots now like this one here. However, in night shots, it's a bit of out of place now with these three cameras. When night mode isn't activated, the main camera produces great details, contrasts, and colors. Ultra wide camera is also good, but some of the time it is a bit soft, a bit muddy, and a bit grainy if there's a little to no light. Zoom shots are a bit confusing because the crop main camera is the one used here and it's soft and muddy. But when you use the night mode on all of the lenses, the results are good to excellent now, especially on the ultra wide, which is a far better result than not having the night mode just turned on. Just remember that you need to have a steady hand because it could take around three to five seconds to take the shot. On the video side of the rear cameras, all three lenses can take up to 4K resolution. However, the main camera can go up to 60 FPS and the other two maxes out at 30. The results are superb with great details, sharpness, and great color reproduction. Except on the ultra wide lens that it only had a good results. The sample test for the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. We are at 4K 60 right now. However, we are only at main camera. And we can just try to zoom it here. All the way up to 3x zoom. Here is the sample video test for the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE with super stabilization on. So we are at the ultra wide lens right now. And here is the main camera. So what are your thoughts about the video quality here? Sound off in the comment section down below. 
Going to the selfie camera results, the 32 megapixel lens will take 8 megapixel shots by default. The photos are natural in skin tones with good color reproduction on some of the results here, which I really like. You only have two options on taking a selfie a narrow or a wide shot. Though my nitpick here is that there's no autofocus here, so focusing on the subjects might be a concern. And here is the sample video test for the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. We are at 1080p at 60 frames per second. So what are your thoughts about the video quality and of course the audio quality of this video? Hey guys, so this is the sample video recording test for the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. We are at 4K resolution right now at 60 frames per second. So what about your thoughts on the video quality? And of course, the audio quality of this video, sound off in the comment section down below. Alright, let's talk about the things I somewhat don't like. And we're starting with the performance of the Galaxy S21 FE. While Samsung did the right thing, give the S22 and S23 series with a powerful Snapdragon processors to all regions in the world, the Galaxy S21 FE is a different story. Just like its siblings, the SE edition outside US and Korea are equipped with an Exynos 2100 chipset, 8 gigs of RAM, and either 128 or 256 gigs of storage like what I have right now. Which don't get me wrong, handling basic tasks and switching apps back and forth on this device is a breeze here. However, in heavy tasks like playing games, this is the weakest link of the processor. While playing games is enjoyable in some titles like Mobile Legends that have Ultra Graphics and Max Graphics on Call of Duty Mobile, the Mali G7A GPU is a bit weaker than the Adreno 660 on the Snapdragon version, which is evident here on playing Genshin Impact that can carry only on medium graphics with 60 FPS without any hiccups. So if you're a gamer and want more firepower, better get the S22 or the S23 instead. Next on the things I don't like are the missing features on this device like expandable storage, an adapter on the box, and a headphone jack. While I forgive the lack of micro SD card here because I have the max storage capacity here, and an adapter because I have some Type-C chargers lying here on my iPad mini 5, the removal of the audio jack is still I want can take. However, whatever complaints I make here, no one will listen to me so I need to live a dongle life right now which in my defense, I can use my DAC player now for a higher resolution audio listening now. Let's talk about the battery life and charging of the S21 FE. Which I forgive these low charging times of the phone that is capped at 25 watts wired compared to the other brands in the name of the battery health longevity. Though, I adore that this phone has 15 watt wireless charging and a 4.5 watt reverse wireless charging so I can charge my wireless earbuds here. But not on its battery life performance which this phone packs 4700 mAh battery capacity here. In my 2-3 weeks of using this phone, I can only average screen on time of 5 hours and 30 minutes for casual to medium usage and only 4 hours and 20 minutes on average for heavy task. That's with Wi-Fi turned on and 20% brightness. Now that I already shared with you the things I like and don't like about the Galaxy S21 FE, the question still remains here. Is this a phone worth buying this 2023? Well. There's two things to remember here. The first thing is, does this fit your needs? If you're a type of user that needs a phone that's not small and not large enough, has the best display, needs a very reliable camera, performance, and most importantly, doesn't change phones for more than three years, then this phone is for you. Whether Samsung will kill the fan edition line of the S series in the near future, I'm pretty sure it's the sweet spot for you right now. And the second thing is, if the price is right. If you will buy this phone at this regular price shown here, I'll say hell to the freaking no. You can snag up an S22 right now at the same ballpark price of this phone. Yet it can even provide you with a better processor and much better specs than this one here. However, if you'll buy this at a discounted price like I did, well, it could be a good deal for you. I got the max variant of the S21 FE for only, get this, 
26,990 pesos or 477 US dollars converted. Though, I am still shocked on why Samsung here in the Philippines is still selling this phone at its launch price and why they release it in a weird time when it's been overshadowed by the S22 afterward. Well, we'll never know why. At the end of the day, I could recommend this phone easily to anyone who wants a flagship phone that doesn't want to burn their wallets on the ground. I just hope that they will release it in a perfect time soon. And since rumors are swirling also that there's no successor to A7 III, I just wish that the next FE phone, if still will continue on, will fill in that price gap because the competition is going tighter and tighter now and they want to be at the top of that phone mountain. Do you prefer a phone like this S21 FE or do you want something else? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And for more videos like this, check my review playlist right here. Or if you want to watch my previous video, click right here. And don't forget to subscribe to our two channels. Again, my name is James and we'll catch you guys on the next one.